Hi everyone, it's Julian from Digital Trends and I'm here at the Android TV demo and we're talking to Shalini Govalpai, the lead for Android TV, and we're talking about what's new with Android TV specifically. There's a new product that we'd like to learn more about and it's from JBL. Can you tell us more? So before I get into JBL, I was just going to start with the overall landscape for Android TV. Um, so Android TV has been doubling year over year. Our momentum has been primarily coming from two distribution partners. The first one being TV OEMs, and so you know you may have experienced Sony TV, which has Android TV in it. Um, the last year we've spent a lot of time with operators, and so that's kind of an emerging area for us, but it's emerging very, very quickly, and we're doubling momentum there again year over year. The third space that we've put in active focus on has been the OTT space, so devices without tuners necessarily, but how do we bring in the best of the web, the best of play, the best of assistant onto those devices and make it a very compelling experience on TV. So that's really been a lot of focus over the last year. Um, and what we're announcing today is something that we've done with JBL. You can think of it as an over the top because it, it doesn't actually have a TV tuner in it. Um, at the same time, it's, it's, you can think of it also as a little bit of a hybrid experience because it does have speakers um, and it does function as a smart speaker as well. So, so some of the experiences we've come up on it are pretty mind blowing in my mind. Um, and so we'll have Matt kind of walk you through the demo of what we've done with, the, with this partner. What I'll show first are just the main reasons why we uh, work with JBL on this, there's a couple of different pain points. One of them is uh, remote control. Uh, so we built in far field mic microphones so you can talk to the device remotely. Uh, also multiple HDMI inputs. So this is really the hub of uh, the, the, the living room now. You can plug in a PlayStation or some other devices. And, and lastly, it's still a sound bar. Like it works speaker only mode and it, and it sounds great. So let me first start off with uh, with some of the voice actions we've got. Hey Google, go home. And so you can do some deep links into apps uh, and to content. So for example, hey Google, play, hey Google, play Star Trek Beyond on Hulu. So what this does is it actually launches Hulu, goes into Star Trek uh, from, from the home screen. And it continues playing where you left off. Exactly, it plays where you left off. And then from within here, you can say, hey Google, go home. So it pauses, goes back home. And so another aspect of the HDMI inputs is now I can uh, use aliasing off the HDMI. So we sniff the HDMI, we know it's a PlayStation attached to HDMI 2. So what I can say is, hey Google, switch to PlayStation. And what you see there is, voice action now switching the inputs. And so if I pick up the PlayStation controller, I can go ahead and play. And in this mode I can say, and still have uh, Assistant be available. Hey Google, what is on my agenda? So I've got an overlay on top of the PlayStation HDMI input. Not that this is the ideal way to play the game, but <laughs> I just want to show you. <laughs> right. And this is a conscious decision we made that we, wanted, we didn't want to have the HDMI inputs just be a passive throughput, that Assistant is available on any input. So how is it registering how many inputs you have on your TV? Because like, naturally you connect those inputs to the TV rather than the sound bar, but here you're connecting everything here or? You're connecting everything through the soundbar, so we'll detect an active HDMI input, and we'll know that th that that input is uh, you can you can switch to. So you can also go, "Hey Google, go home," and then uh, show you speaker-only mode. Uh, you can basically tell the TV to turn off, and then we can show uh, music playing on the speaker without the TV being on. Hey Google, turn the TV off. And in this mode, I can also turn the t lights on. Hey Google, turn the lights on. The lights are on. Hey Google, play Lady Gaga on Pandora. And then I can turn the volume up.
So that's, that's the GPU link bar. And you guys have um, some buttons here. It's the volume controls. That's to easily pair to Bluetooth devices, or? Yeah, let me walk through the uh, buttons on the top. You've got the first one's uh, input selection, so it cycles through all your inputs. There's a Bluetooth button that allows you to go to the Bluetooth input, as well as pair your remote control. Also, if you want to pair your smartphone, you can pair your smartphone to the, the speaker. There's volume down, volume up, and there's a physical mic mute switch. So it's a circuit switch. It breaks this connection to the mics in case you don't want to have the mic's always listening. And you, you said there's two far-field mics, so how far do you think someone would be able to, this would be able to pick up someone's voice? Yeah, there's two far-field mics. They're really designed for being like the Google Home Max, right? Far-field uh, distance, and this is really designed for the living room. And do you think we'll be able to see more soundbar type devices later on this year? Definitely. Uh, the nice thing about soundbar devices is that they're upgradable. You can keep your TV. Um, they're also a hybrid device between an OTT box uh, and a full smart TV. Um, and this is still going to act like a great soundbar for many years to come, right? Even uh, after the three years that we support, this is still, you've got optical in, you've got analog audio in, three HDMI inputs. So it's a great soundbar on its own as well. And uh, do we have any pricing information about the JBL or when it's going to come out? Great question. So pricing uh, availability will be out in the fall of 2018.